The main character in the film is Manu, a destitute individual who performs trivial tasks in exchange for money. He is in such dire straits that he doesn't hesitate to engage in questionable endeavors. Currently, he is residing on a beach, having been evicted from his home due to unpaid rent. One sunny day, while relaxing, an old client named Lamouche approaches him with an offer. Manu is tasked with retrieving a suitcase from one location and delivering it to another, all the while refraining from peeking inside, as its contents are highly significant. In order to maintain confidentiality, the transportation must take place in a vehicle. Though the job is clearly unlawful, Manu's desperation for money leads him to accept without further inquiry. However, there arises a slight problem, he doesn't have a car of his own. Politely, he asks if he can deliver the suitcase on foot, but Lamouche angrily insists that a vehicle is necessary. After Lamouche departs, Manu embarks on a search for a car. Since he lacks the funds to purchase one, he resorts to theft. Eventually, he locates an old model and drives it to his trusted friend, John Gabb. Unwilling to undertake the mission alone, Manu proposes that they share the money equally, and Jean Gabb readily agrees, also being desperate for cash. As the two venture towards their destination, they hear peculiar sounds emanating from the trunk. Initially disregarding it as engine noise, the volume steadily amplifies. Suddenly the car halts in the middle of the road, yet the noise persists, confirming that it has nothing to do with the engine. Anxious, they nervously open the trunk, only to discover an enormous fly confined within. This extraordinary insect startles them, appearing as though it hails from another planet. Hesitantly closing the trunk, they begin discussing their next steps. Manu suggests disposing of the fly to make room for the upcoming suitcase. However, upon attempting to open the trunk, it becomes jammed, causing him to fret. Lamouche explicitly instructed him to keep the suitcase in the trunk. While desperately contemplating a solution, an idea crystallizes in John Gab's mind. He proposes that they tame the insect, teaching it how to pilfer money and food from unsuspecting individuals. They realize that this potential endeavor is far more lucrative than the 500 euros promised by their current target. Wholeheartedly embracing the idea, Manu and John Gab abandon their original mission and shift their focus to the fly. However, they need a secluded location to house the insect since it cannot be exposed to the public eye. After aimlessly wandering, they stumble upon an abandoned trailer, deeming it the perfect training ground for the fly due to its remote location. The only predicament is an elderly man living inside. Yet, Manu possesses a solution for every obstacle. He engages the old man in conversation before striking him from behind, subsequently restraining him to a barrel and claiming the trailer as their own. During their exploration of the premises, they uncover food, tools, and even a firearm. Though Manu has never wielded one before, he holds onto it for protection. Finally, utilizing the tools, they succeed in unlocking the car's trunk. Following this, they decide to bring the fly inside, securing it with duct tape to prevent escape. It is at this moment that the elderly man discloses the hiding place of 3,000 euros and willingly offers it to Manu and Jean Gab if they release him. Manu doesn't question him at all and readily agrees to accompany him. In the meantime, Jean Gob decides to stay in the trailer and take care of the fly. While on their way, Manu stops the car and begins searching for the gun. This gives the old man enough time to escape through the door and run away. By the time Manu realizes what has happened, it's already too late. Disappointed, he returns home and informs his friend that he couldn't secure the money. To his anger, John Gobb has used the remaining cash to buy cat food. He explains that they must prioritize feeding the fly as it's their only hope of survival. As the evening arrives, the creature devours all the food but still craves more. The friends, on the other hand, are starving as they haven't eaten anything in 24 hours. Consequently, they come up with a risky plan the next morning. Brandishing the gun, they intimidate a stranger into purchasing groceries for them. Once back home, Manu immediately starts cooking, while Jean Gob begins training the fly, affectionately naming it Dominique after his ex-girlfriend. The fly seems to be a quick learner, but it will take several days before it can fully comprehend commands. While engrossed in conversation, Manu accidentally leaves the gas stove on. This leads to a fire in the kitchen, subsequently engulfing the entire trailer. Manu barely escapes with a pot of broth. Now homeless once again, they cling to their shared vision. They spend the evening savoring sips of the broth while also feeding it to their insect companion. That night, they attempt to sleep in the car, but Manu finds Dominique's strange noises discomforting. Consequently, he decides to sleep outdoors. 
In the morning, Menu suggests selling the car and purchasing a more comfortable one to sleep in. Unfortunately, when they try to start the car, it refuses to cooperate. Undeterred, Manu devises another solution. They use a small bike to tow the car to the dealership. Along the way, they encounter a group of young people. One of the girls, Cecile, mistakes Manu for her school friend Fred. Despite his attempts to clarify the misunderstanding, she is thrilled to reunite and invites them to her farmhouse for a vacation. This news delights Manu and John Go, as they finally have a proper place to stay. Upon reaching the farmhouse, they leave the car at a distance and lock Dominique inside. They relax by the pool with some drinks. Cecile's brother Serge is initially upset about her inviting strangers to their home, but he chooses not to argue at the moment. When night falls, Cecile shows them to their rooms, assuring them that they can stay as long as they like. Minou is overjoyed, but Jean Gob worries about the well-being of their fly companion. Later, Cecile shares her school yearbook and shows Menu a picture of Fred. To his astonishment, the resemblance between him and Fred is uncanny, as if they were twins. The scene then transitions to dinner where we are introduced to Cecile's sister, Agnes. Agnes talks in an incredibly loud tone, almost as if she is screaming all the time. Cecile explains that Agnes had a head injury as a child, which caused her voice to become permanently loud and intense. After dinner, Jean Gab sneaks away to his car and retrieves Dominique. He brings the creature back to his room and begins playing and training with it. Meanwhile, Manu heads to his room, only to find Agnes already there. He attempts to strike up a conversation, but she misunderstands his intentions and kicks him out. Desperate for a place to stay, Manu tries to enter Jean Gabs's room, but his friend won't let him in, since he's busy training the fly. Left with no other option, Manu spends the night by the pool. The following morning, Agnes confronts John Gabsy outside his room, suspicious that he's hiding someone inside. Despite John Gabsy's inability to reveal the truth about the giant fly, he concocts a lie about it being his pet dog. This only angers Agnes more since dogs aren't allowed in the house. She threatens to inform her sister and get him evicted. Fearing the consequences, John Gabsy urgently confides in Manu and explains the situation. He pleads with Manu to find a dog quickly to solve the problem. Out of frustration, Manu agrees to help. Fortunately, luck is on his side as he discovers a stray puppy nearby. He sneaks it into the house and hands it to Jean Gabs. Elsewhere, Agnes tells the others about the dog in the house, but they dismiss her since she's known for making things up. Eventually, they reluctantly agree to check the room and are shocked to find Manu holding a tiny puppy. He creates a story about adopting the dog out of pity and apologizes for not informing everyone. Cecile is touched by his selflessness and allows the dog to stay. However, both Agnes and Serge grow suspicious as the noises they heard the previous night didn't sound like a puppy but resembled those of a giant fly. Later, Yev demonstrates a trick he taught Dominique to Manu. The fly now responds to his commands and signals. Delighted by their progress, they believe it won't be long before Dominique can help them with food. Meanwhile at the pool, Manu and Jean Gabs continue their playful antics, much to Agnes's annoyance. Back in the room, Dominique and the tiny puppy share a tense moment as the fly lunges toward the dog. By the pool, Manu and Jean Gabs's noise becomes unbearable for Agnes, prompting her to curse at them and retreat indoors. Suspecting that Jean Gabs is hiding something, she manages to unlock his room using a hairpin. To her horror, Agnes discovers the massive fly inside and screams, attracting everyone's attention. Shocked and unable to speak, Agnes fails to explain what she saw. Meanwhile, Jean Gap finds the dog's leash and realizes Dominique ate it, but the others mistakenly believe it was Agnes. Thinking she's responsible for the missing leash, they call the police on her. Eventually, Jean Gap finds Dominique near the pool and discreetly hides it in the car. In the next scene, the police label Agnes as mentally unstable and prepare to admit her to a psychiatric facility. Before her capture, she has a conversation with her sister. Surprisingly, she speaks in a normal tone for the first time in years. Agnes proceeds to explain everything she witnessed in that room. Unfortunately, Cecile remains skeptical and refuses to believe her. Later on, one of the officers talking to Cecile realizes that he went to school with her. Coincidentally, his name is Fred, and he bears a striking resemblance to Manu. To prove his identity, he shows a tattoo on his leg that he acquired during their school days. This revelation shocks Cecile leading her to finally recognize that the two men are imposters. The police then move forward with arresting them for fraud. However, Manu and Jane Gabs managed to make a daring escape in their car just before that. 
With no destination and no money for sustenance, they decide to continue their initial mission. Despite being three days behind schedule, they head to the target's location and successfully obtain the briefcase. Their next destination is a wealthy businessman who turns out to be their second target. They hand over the briefcase to him and he pays them 500 euros. It is at this moment that they discover the briefcase contains nothing but ornaments. It seems like these guys have a fondness for Christmas. The movie then fast forwards a few days and we see that they have taken up residence on the beach once again. Jean Gabs appears excited as he has completed his training with the fly. He shows Dominique a picture of bananas in the newspaper, hoping the insect will retrieve them. However, once he sets the creature free, it simply flies away. Jean Gabzi still holds on to hope that it will return, but Manu is convinced that it won't. As they find themselves back at square one, they become emotional and start discussing the significance of friendship. Jean Gabze nods in agreement, although he's still saddened by the departure of his pet. They then start the car's engine and prepare to depart, but before they do, Dominique suddenly appears with a bunch of bananas.